Let's go to the U.S. now, where former First Lady Barbara Bush will be laid to rest at a private service in Houston today. Wife to the 41st president and mother to the 43rd, Bush died Tuesday at the age of 92. First Lady Melania Trump will represent the White House. Former presidents Bill Clinton and Barack Obama are also expected to attend the funeral. And for more on this, let's bring in Andrew Oak. He is a First Lady documentarian and author of Unusual for Their Time, On the Road with America's First Ladies, Volume 1 and 2. He joins us from D.C. Andrew, you have extensively documented American First Ladies. What can you tell us about Barbara Bush? Well, she stacks up among all of them at the very top for a number of reasons. You know, over the past week, we've seen so many videos come out family videos, uh, behind-the-scenes videos, <clears throat> excuse me, in addition to the world stage that we saw her on or so familiar with, this woman walked that line between personal and professional so effectively. She was the matriarch of a political dynasty, probably the most successful political dynasty in American history, and she did it with style and grace while still keeping that professional sense and all of her philanthropic philanthropic uh, endeavors intact. She's just a remarkable woman. Yeah, remarkable indeed, right? If you look at the at the former first lady, Barbara Bush, and we're seeing video of her now, she seems quite docile with the, the lovely pearl earrings and the pearls, her trademark pearls around her neck and always dressed very elegantly, but really very, very influential. And from what we're hearing, she really had the ear of both presidents. 100%. And I'm sure her son, Jeb, too, a governor, and when he ran for uh, president against President Donald Trump in his last election. Um, she, she, her, her White House Secret Service name was Tranquility, but she was a quiet iron fist. You crossed her, you got the business in, and she said what she felt and meant what she said, and everyone knew it, but they respected it for her, and that genuine nature in that you saw what you got, and you got what you saw with this woman. Uh, very interesting, the uh, the quiet iron fist. How did you get to know Barbara Bush through your work, and what did you learn about her? Well, yeah, I've spent a lot of time in Maine, where she spent a lot of time. And we have to remember, Barbara Bush is not just a name on a library or a name on a hospital. She has a facility at the Barbara Bush Memorial Hospital in Portland, Maine. On her birthday, she would travel there, and she would get down on the floor with kids, sick, terminally ill kids and read to them on their birthday. These children in her facility knew her, knew this woman personally, so much so that one, in his final days, unfortunately, the only thing he wanted to do was talk to Mrs. Bush. She wasn't in town, but they made that happen through a video chat. This woman gave selflessly to her causes, uh, and I don't think people know really the extent of that. They know that she did good work. They know the work that she did. But it really went beyond what we knew in, 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 the, in the public. You talk about her, her charity work. We got to go back to the 1980s when it wasn't cool to be around somebody who had HIV. And she was there front and center, almost like the royalty for the U.S., much like Princess Diana uh, for England, where she would hug these children who were infected with HIV and prove to the world that there's nothing to be feared here. She really was groundbreaking in that regard, no? Uh, that, that's an excellent point, and it was going through my mind as I was telling you about these children in Maine. Yeah. And it was. No one knew what was going on with AIDS in the 80s, and to have someone like that step out, and she has that motherly quality, that grandmotherly quality that we embrace physically. You mentioned the pearls and things like that. She, she knew where her strengths were. She knew what her appeal was, and she knew how to work it in a, in a very genuine way. There were no pretenses about Mrs. Bush. She even said that she wore the pearls to hide her neck. Uh, she didn't like the way her neck looked as she aged. She, she was in an interview uh, relatively recently, a Valentine's interview with her granddaughter, Jenna Bush, and her husband, H.W., and H.W. was saying how pretty she was. They were talking about her wedding picture. She goes, oh, well, I'm pretty now if you like wrinkles. I mean, she, she definitely had a sense of purpose, a sense of self, and she, she, knew, where, she knew where she sat. All right. Well, that funeral service being held today. Thank you for teeing it up for us. Andrew Oak is a First Lady documentarian and the author of Unusual for Their Time, On the Road with America's First Ladies, Volume 1 and 2. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you.